Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news out of Barnesville, Minnesota, after police say a woman is in jail for the death of a child. Clay County investigators say they were called to Sanford Hospital Thursday afternoon for reports of possible child neglect. This woman, 35-year-old Kelly Jo Anderson, is currently being held at the Cass County Jail on felony criminal neglect. However, she has yet to be formally charged. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has more. Neighbors say it was here at 1001 9th Street Southeast where officers from the Minnesota BCA, Clay County Sheriff's Department and Barnesville Police showed up around 8 Thursday night. They say officers remained on scene searching through the home throughout the night, not leaving until just before 9 Friday morning. As for the woman suspected in the child's death, several neighbors tell me Kelly Jo Anderson is a nice woman and a good mother and say they would never suspect her to be the center of an investigation as serious as this. We looked into Anderson's criminal history, however, found nothing besides an old traffic offense. Investigators say as of right now, Anderson's husband is not expected to be arrested or charged in the child's death and say more information is expected to be released this weekend or Monday. In Barnesville, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Clay County says the child will be taken to the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy to determine the cause of death. A Moorhead long-term care facility is reporting more cases of COVID-19. Three more residents at Eventide on 8th have tested positive for a total of 16 residents. Four staff members at Eventide on 8th are also positive. Eventide is also reporting that a staff member at Eventide Cheyenne Crossings in West Fargo tested positive for the coronavirus, bringing that facility's total to 22. A staff member at the Senior Living Apartments tested positive for the disease. In North Dakota, 39 more coronavirus cases are being reported, bringing the total to 748 positive cases. 17 people are in the hospital and the death toll remains at 15. 285 are listed as recovered. Cass County again saw major jumps today. We have more information on COVID-19 in both Minnesota and North Dakota on the VNL News app. Minnesota is now reporting more than 3,000 positive cases in the state. The exact total is now 3,185 with 221 deaths. That's an, in an increase of 21 deaths from the day before. Clay County now has 100 reported cases and four deaths in total. 1,594 people have recovered. We're rolling into the weekend thinking about warmer weather and keeping in mind that we might see some rain too. Let's go to Hutch's house for an update on this evening. Hey, Hutch. Andrea, what lovely weather we have as we close out our work week. Once again, mid and even a few upper 60s out there. Notice the cool pool up here in Devil's Lake. It's 53 degrees there. But here's why. There's showers and thunderstorms are rumbling through northeast portions of North Dakota. There's nothing severe here, but just some brief, heavy downpours of rain. Cavalier out passing out of the Walhalla area and pushing in towards uh, Walsh County right now, some showers. And just over the big lake now, heading into the Devil's Lake area is a, a cluster of storms. This cell over here heading towards Park River by 527 or about the end of our broadcast here, you could be seeing that heavier downpour and a few strikes of light. And then the Fort Totten area will be seeing it by about the same time. These are moving only at about 20 miles per hour, so you can expect a good soaking of rain, a good tenth of an inch, maybe even a little more. This evening in Fargo, temperatures are going to slip down through the 40s, but Andrea, I hope you get a chance to get out and fire up the old grill tonight. It looks delightful. Now, we are going to suffer just a pinch of a setback this weekend off details and what you can expect coming up here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. One man is in jail right now on multiple charges after authorities say he shot up a car in Hankinson, North Dakota. The Richland County Sheriff's Department says it happened just after midnight. Authorities responded to the call and found a vehicle with several bullet holes in it. 27-year-old Cody Lancefield of Hankinson was then arrested for reckless endangerment, terrorizing and criminal mischief. Authorities did not say if the victim was hurt in the shooting. The Bemidji Police Department wants your help finding two missing teenage sisters. Authorities say 16-year-old Amira Jenkins and 14-year-old Anishta Jenkins were last seen yesterday in Cass Lake. Police say Amira was last seen wearing a black sweater with the name Jenkins on the back with black and gray pants, and she appeared to have scarring on her arms. 
Anishta was last seen wearing a gray sweatshirt with gray jogging pants. Officials do not suspect foul play at this time, but urge anyone with information to call police. Authorities did not provide a picture of the girls. President Donald Trump signed off today on a nearly half a trillion dollar emergency aid package. But the rescue money for small businesses and hospitals is being overshadowed by the president's comments regarding injecting disinfectants as a possible treatment for the coronavirus, something doctors caution is medically unsound and dangerous. Alice Barr has the latest. A devastating milestone today. More than 50,000 Americans have now lost their lives to coronavirus. As researchers race to find treatments with nothing yet approved, President Trump facing criticism for suggesting scientists look into injecting disinfectants into the human body as a cure. Is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning that you're going to have to use? medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me the president retreating from those comments today now, i was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you but the manufacturer of lysol says it's already gotten questions about using its products as a treatment warning today quote under no circumstances should our disinfectant products be administered into the human body through injection ingestion or any other route President Trump also suggested researching exposing the human body to internal light and heat as a possible treatment. His own task force coordinator saying she's seen no evidence that would work. That is a treatment. It comes as the FDA is warning doctors against prescribing a malaria drug widely touted by President Trump. Studies so far have shown scant evidence it's effective in treating coronavirus, but enough dangerous side effects to warrant serious concern. All of this overshadowing the most important news today for millions of struggling Americans. President Trump signing a nearly $500 billion emergency relief bill to send desperately needed money to small businesses and hospitals across the country. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. As Congress and the White House look ahead to a fifth coronavirus relief bill, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said today Democrats will not sign off unless it includes money for state and local governments. Fargo PD has a new tool in its arsenal, and it's a first for the department. Officer Jennifer Gustafson's canine partner, Toby, is Fargo's first explosives detection dog. They're also certified in tracking, building and area searches, and apprehension. The new canine team was added through a partnership with the Fargo Dome. Students all over the U.S. are wrapping up a disrupted school year, and it's been especially tough on seniors who are missing out on a lot of end-of-the-year traditions. That's why people rallied around Dilworth, Glendon, Felton teenagers today when they picked up their caps and gowns for graduation. It was curbside, of course, and there was plenty of social distancing, even as community members cheered for the class of 2020. Valley News Live and the Great Plains Food Bank are holding a virtual food drive to help out people impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. And there's plenty of time for you to help us. We hit our original goal of $10,000 on Wednesday, and we're going to keep going until May 22nd. Our food drive is aiming for $20,000. And if you can lend a hand, donate at valleynewslive.com or on the VNL News app. Just look for this button. When the going gets tough, the tough get cooking. Just ahead at five, meet the YouTube cooking show star who's just 10 years old. We're tracking a few showers with rumbles of thunder moving in from the north and west while most of us enjoy a quiet Friday. Your forecast is next.